Hola amigos! My last video about clutch control raised a lot of questions, like is it safe to drag the clutch for a long time, does it damage the clutch, what is the biting point, what is the friction zone, what's the difference between them, etc. To answer all those questions and many more, today I present you a complete guide on how to properly use the clutch on your motorcycle. In case you are new to this channel, my name is Andrei Badrov and I am an instructor for Moto Control Advanced Motorcycle School. And yes, I talk funny. It's because of medical condition, which develops when you are born in Russia and live there for 30 years. Today, in our complete guide, we will learn how to use the clutch properly, when we use it, in which situations and how exactly we operate it. Everything you need to use your clutch effectively will be in this guide. We are going to use structured approach. I am going not only tell you how to use the clutch, but also explain why we do it a certain way and give all the necessary demonstrations, so you can try everything for yourself on your bike and ensure that this is indeed the way it works, that it is not something I just made up myself. Let's start from the beginning. What our clutch actually does? It's simple. Clutch disconnects the engine from the gearbox. When we pull in the clutch, we can open the throttle and rev the engine as much as we want and nothing will happen, our bike will not move. When we release the clutch, our engine becomes rigidly connected to the gearbox and our bike directly starts to respond to the throttle. When clutch is pulled in, engine is disconnected from the gearbox and it is called disengaged clutch. When clutch is released, engine is connected and it is called engaged clutch. Clutch pulled in, disengaged. Released clutch, clutch engaged. But as you can see, there is a whole range between engaged and disengaged clutch. It is not just an on-off switch. All this clutch lever travel has important points and zones to it. Let's look at them. Pull in the clutch, start the bike and put it in first gear. Now very slowly start releasing the clutch. At some point you'll feel that your bike just starts to creep forward. This point is called clutch engagement point or clutch biting point. It's the same. Everything before is the zone where clutch is disengaged. It doesn't matter if you pull in the clutch all the way in, or here, or here. As long as it is in the zone before the biting point, it is disengaged. Your engine is disconnected. After the biting point starts the so-called friction zone, or the zone of partially engaged clutch. Here the engine connects to the transmission more and more as you release the clutch more and more, until you release the clutch completely at which point it becomes fully engaged. And at the very end of the clutch lever travel, you should have some little slack or free play. It is here just to make sure your clutch fully engages even during operation when the clutch heats up and all mechanical parts expand. This free play always must be here. If you notice that it vanishes when you are riding, it means you are really overheating the clutch. We'll return to burning the clutch soon, for now let's go on. To sum up the clutch range, we have a zone where clutch is disengaged. Then we have a biting point where the clutch starts to engage. Then we have the friction zone where clutch is engaged partially. And when we let the clutch go completely, it is engaged completely. Those are the parts that matter. Now, when we got all the terminology out of the way, let's see how we actually use the clutch. Let's start with shifting. The most basic shifting process, like they teach us on motorcycle courses, looks like this. When we accelerate and need to upshift, we close the throttle, pull in the clutch, push the shifter up all the way, release it, then release the clutch and go back on the throttle. To downshift, we do the opposite. We roll off the throttle, pull in the clutch, push the shifter down all the way, release it, slowly release the clutch to avoid abrupt engine braking, and go back on the throttle if we need to. In essence, we disengage the clutch, 
which disconnects engine from gearbox, which allows us to change gears easily. And then, when we're done with shifting, we gradually engage the clutch and connect the engine back. And it works great, nothing wrong with that. If you use this method and happy with it, it's perfectly okay. However, we can improve the shifting process, make it faster and smoother if we refine the clutch operationally. What we do differently now is we do everything almost simultaneously. We roll off the throttle and quickly pull in the clutch, but not all the way in this time. It's enough if we pull it in just past the biting point. Remember that once you pulled it past the biting point, it is disengaged. There is no reason to pull it in further. It's just a waste of time. At the same time as you are pulling in the clutch, you can make an upshift. Initially, when you are starting to learn this method, you can preload the shifter lever a little prior to your shifting. But with some practice, as you start to feel the timing of the whole process and your hands and left foot become synchronized, you can just straight upshift without preloading the lever. And as you pop into next gear, you can release the clutch and go back on the throttle. In the end, you will have really fast and butter smooth shifting with almost zero time spent between gears. Here how it looks from three points. From the clutch point, from the throttle, and from the shifter. Downshifting looks almost the same, except now we have our throttle inverted. Obviously, when we are downshifting, we are losing speed, so our throttle should be closed. And at the moment we pull in the clutch, we bleep the throttle briefly to add RPM, just before we downshift, to make engine braking smoother. Clutch-wise, the process is exactly the same. We quickly pull it in past the biting point and then release it gradually. So again, we end up with very fast and smooth shifting, which looks like this. Clutch. Throttle. Shifter. The main bit about clutch itself here is that we don't need to pull it in all the way each time we shift. Pulling it past the engagement point is enough to fully disengage. Again, this method of shifting is not something everyone must do. It's just a way to get very fast and smooth gear shifting. If you want it, you can use it, and if you don't, the usual way of shifting is perfectly okay too. Another area where we use our clutch quite a lot is slow speed riding. And it is not necessarily circles and figure eights we practice. A good chunk of day-to-day -day riding, like filtering, riding over obstacles or simply starting from the traffic light, also uses slow speed riding techniques. For all those things, we can use our clutch. Now, in any video I make about slow speed riding, I always have a bunch of comments, like you can't use the clutch this way. You will burn your clutch. You will overheat your clutch. You sound like a count from Sesame Street. Guys, I will not burn my clutch this way. I know it for a fact. I am so sure in it that I am ready to bet money on it. I literally propose a friendly bet, which will go like this. I'll open a fundraiser page, which will be called a Moto Control Super Scientific Motorcycle Clutch Test. If we reach $200, I will do a video of me riding very slowly using the sleeping clutch, just like you see here, for an hour straight. No cooldown, no pauses, a straight whole hour of sleeping the clutch. If I burn the clutch, I lose. Boo-hoo for me, I refund everybody and go buy myself a new clutch. If my clutch ends up fine, 
I win, become $200 richer and go buy myself a camera gimbal. If you want to bet against me, be my guest, throw in a dollar or two. I'm 100% sure I'll win though. Or if you just want to throw in a couple of bucks because you want to see the video and to support this channel, I won't complain either. With all that burning clutch nonsense aside, let's talk about how we actually use our clutch for this type of riding. One of the most important slow speed riding techniques is so-called friction zone technique. Friction zone riding technique, despite its name, doesn't use only the friction zone of the clutch. It also uses the throttle and rear brake. The whole idea of using the friction zone technique for slow speed riding is that we can accelerate and slow down our bike not by opening the throttle, but by releasing the clutch instead. For this to happen, we open the throttle slightly and we keep the clutch partially full. We don't pull it in all the way and don't release it all the way out. Instead, we keep it around the biting point. And when we need to accelerate, we release the clutch a little. When we need to slow down, we pull it in a little. If we keep the throttle open, we have almost instant acceleration when we need to. There is practically no lag in power delivery. As soon as we start releasing the clutch, our bike accelerates right away. And as we don't release the clutch all the way, we can't stall as long as we keep engine revs up. When at some point we lose the balance and our bike starts to tip over, we can just release the clutch a little, our motorcycle will accelerate and stand up. Easy, right? You'll never need to try to muscle your bike upright ever again. You will move your fingers slightly and that's it, bike is in balance. Very good. Also, we can add the rear brake now. You may have heard some instructors teach to drag rear brake the whole time during the slow speed maneuvers, but I personally don't like it, so I don't teach it. Dragging the rear brake the whole time overheats and wears out our clutch pretty fast. It overheats the rear brake system, sometimes up to the point when the brake fluid starts to boil, and our engine has to work and produce more heat too. Because of all this, I prefer using the rear brake just as an addition to the clutch. To slow down, we pull our clutch in just past its engagement point, where it is no longer pulling the bike forward. And additionally, we can add just a little bit of rear brake to slow down faster. And when we need to accelerate to balance the bike, we just release the brake and release the clutch a little. I find it much better than if you just drag the rear brake for the whole time. As you can see, if we keep our throttle open, work the clutch and add just a tiny bit of rear brake when we need to slow down, after some practice we'll be able to balance our bike pretty good on a very slow speeds without any problems. Just for you to have a reference, here's how my clutch control looks like when I'm doing slow maneuvers. Notice that my clutch lever is really close to the biting point most of the time. It goes in and out of the friction zone depending on what I need at the moment – accelerate or slow down. And I move my fingers really a tiny bit. There is no need to pull the clutch in and out too much. Once you get used to friction zone riding technique, small gradual movements is all you really need. Work smart, not hard. That's the most fitting motto when riding motor. Now I think it's a good time to discuss one more common use for our clutch – taken off from a stop. When you practice slow riding for a little while, you will probably notice that your clutch acts in a non-linear way. At first, when it just starts to bite, you can release it pretty fast and bike doesn't really react very fast. But when you release the clutch more and more, at some point it starts to pull you forward really strong. And now you suddenly have to be more careful and release it much slower. So, to take off confidently, you have to release the clutch at a different rate, pretty fast at first and much slower at the end of the clutch lever travel. The same, by the way, applies when you change gears. Releasing the clutch at a slower rate closer towards the end makes shifting smoother, especially downshift. 
and to complicate matters even further, your clutch reacts differently when you apply throttle. Clutch transfers the parts of engine power to the gearbox, right? Naturally, when we open the throttle, our engine starts to produce more power, and the part of this power also becomes bigger. So now, when we release the clutch the same amount as before, our bike is accelerating faster. Sounds a little bit complicated, isn't it? Don't worry, there is a way to record all this into our brain for good. It's called a stop-and-go exercise. The goal of this exercise is to make our bike stop for a moment completely and then take off again smoothly, without putting our feet down. First, it forces you to do what we discussed earlier – use your clutch in conjunction with the throttle and rear brake. You have to remember to pull in the clutch when you apply brake, release brake when you release the clutch and keep your throttle slightly open to prevent your bike from stalling. This exercise may sound too simple, but remember that everything happens rather fast, so you have to think quickly. And second, this exercise forces you to release the clutch in a right way, fast at first and slower later. If you release the clutch too slow, your bike will lose its balance and you'll have to put your foot down. If you release the clutch too fast, you'll either stall or jerk your bike. Stop and go is a very nice little exercise, which doesn't require any cones, and you can do it even on very small parking lot, it doesn't need much space. By the way, this exercise is a part of my training routine course, which you can check out via the link in the description to this video. When we learn how to use our clutch, we obviously have to spend some time practicing it. And sometimes my students complain a little about their hand becoming tired. Part of this problem goes away with practice, when the left hand gains some muscle on it. But another big problem can be lever adjustment. Your lever adjustment is really one of the first things you should do with your bike. It helps a lot. On most bikes you can adjust the levers up and down like this by loosening their clamping screws. Once you've done it, sit on your bike in your usual riding position, put your hand on a lever like this and level it properly. In my experience, the majority of people find it most comfortable when their hand makes a straight line with their arm, without the wrist being too bad. That's usually a good starting point. This proper adjustment alone can significantly improve the amount of control you have over your clutch. On some bikes you have also another lever adjustment like this, which sets up how far you have your lever from the handlebar. To adjust it, push the lever forward like this and then set the desired setting. Again, from my experience with my students, usually the bigger hands you have, the further you may want to set up your levers. Plus, if you like to use one or two fingers on your clutch instead of four, you also may want to set the clutch further from the handlebar to avoid trapping your fingers under the lever. And speaking of fingers, I receive this question quite a lot. How many fingers should I use on a clutch? Two, three or maybe all four? And should I keep them on the clutch all the time or only when I need to use it? There is no straight answer, because really it depends on how you ride. Generally, if you ride a lot off-road or making wheelies, you probably already noticed that you want only one finger on the clutch, or maximum two, because otherwise you have too much force going through the handlebars and you start to experience arm pop after a little while. But in normal riding conditions on asphalt roads, it really doesn't make that much difference. For street riding, you can just go with whatever is more comfortable for you on your specific bike. Me, for example, on Vulcan, which had a quite heavy clutch, I used all four fingers. On 200 Duke, the clutch is pretty light, so here I usually use only two fingers. As far as keeping fingers on levers, I usually keep them only when I filter or do slow speed exercises. When just riding down the road, I personally find it unnecessary, so I don't do it. But really, this stuff is more of a matter of personal preference. There is no absolute right way to do it.
Now I have to address the question, which I receive really often. Why we even use the clutch friction zone for all that slow speed riding? Why don't we just apply the rear brake to slow down? Here, for example, sure, we can ride without clutch and easily do all that stuff with full lock turns, figure eights, etc. All seems good, what's the problem? The answer is very simple. It all depends on speed. The problem is, in this situation, we are like in the movie Speed. We have to go above 12 km per hour, otherwise we will stall the engine. But if, let's say, I want to filter through the standing traffic, it will be rude to zip like that around cars. I would like to go slower. In this situation, clutch gives much more control. I can go at any speed I want up to 0 km per hour. Plus, I am not overcooking the rear brake like crazy. That's pretty much the answer. The way you want to ride in this case is determined by the speed you want. Plus, you have to consider the bike you are riding. Small 125s usually can go really, really slow, no problem, literally with walking speed like 5-6 km per hour. If you try this on some Ducati, you will simply stall it. It's nice to be able to do both variations, with the clutch and without it. This way you'll be able to ride any bike in confined spaces easily, regardless of its weight or size. That's why in this channel we have different types of exercises, including the friction zone and throttle with rear brake combinations. Each technique has its pros and cons, so we shouldn't just blindly stick to only one. If you wish to know more about riding your bike, check out my video courses on the link below the video. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel to be updated on my new advanced online course for riders who want to develop really high-level riding skills. This course is not ready yet, but it will be soon, so make sure you turn on notifications. I promise this will be awesome. And as usual, thank you for watching, ride safe and have a great day. Bye!